first, all I could see was this face coming toward me. Then I saw the room, a queer mirrored room. And somehow, I was inside it. There was danger there. I knew that. I wanted to turn and run, but I couldn't. It seemed as if my brain was handcuffed, and I had to do what I'd come to do. dream. Two thumbprints on my neck. They weren't there last night when I undressed. But it couldn't be. It was a nightmare. Talk about your realistic dreams. I couldn't have done it to myself. Choked myself without waking up. key, the things out of the dream. I'd never seen them before. I didn't have them when I undressed last night. That button wasn't mine. The key wasn't mine. But if they were there, it must have happened. The dream, 
the struggle, the murder, everything. But how? Did something like that happen and I not know it? Was I going insane? A jackhammer started pounding inside my head. I had to see if the outside world was still there. The street below looked the same as it did last night. The same greasy spoon where I eat now and then. The same traffic noises. The same characters lounging around. There was nothing the matter out there. It was in here with me. My stomach was riding a roller coaster. I was sick. I couldn't face going to work. Fitzroy, five one oh three. Fremont National Bank, there you were speaking. Oh, yes, Grayson. Mm hmm. What seems to be the trouble? Oh, well, it could be the flu. Mm hmm. Yes. All right, all right. Goodbye. Good morning, Joe. Good morning, Mr. Jackson. Oh, isn't it a lovely morning? Lots of things I'd rather do than work today. <laughs> Good morning, Mr. Vinya. Good morning, Betty. Vince Grayson just called. He's not feeling well. Will you take his window today? Oh, is Vince sick? What did he say at Laura? sicker I got. Suddenly, the room started spinning. Forty. Fifty. Federal 7648. Hotel Commodore. Vince Grayson's room, please. He doesn't answer? Thank you. Funny he shouldn't be there, isn't it? If he was sick, you know what I mean? No, I don't. I'd better check his books, just to make safe. Miss, would you like to take this money, or should I try another bank? I had to get out of my room, out into the sunshine. I had to stay out of the shadows. I knew that tonight, I'd be afraid of the dark. I had to talk to somebody about this crazy thing. Betty? I get sympathy from Betty. What I needed was an explanation. Cliff, my brother-in-law, he ought to be able to figure out something. I got to Cliff's place just before dinner. My sister Lil told me he was out in the garage. Hello, Cliff. Oh, hi, Ben. How's the boy? Cliff, I, I want to talk to you. Be with you as soon as I finish sanding this. Exact reproduction of Martha Washington's bed. What's the matter, kid? Something on your mind? I need your help. You and Betty have a fight or something? Cliff, this is gonna sound screwy. Last night I dreamed I killed a man. I, I don't know who or where it was supposed to be. I stabbed him with a steel ball. 
during the fight, a button came off in my hand. When I'd kill him, I locked the body in a closet and took the key. And then when I woke up, well, look. And this morning, there was blood on my wrist. I figured maybe I'd scratch myself in my sleep, my ear or my nose or someplace. So I just washed it off. That was before I saw thee. You're all in pieces, huh? You men coming in or not? You want your soup to get cold? I keep cracking the polish off of that one nail. Are you lucky? Lil's got a rib roast tonight. You know I'm getting jealous of that, but you? Vince, why did you tell me you've been working hard at the bank all day? Because I did. How are you feeling, Vince? I thought you were sick. I was. I just didn't feel well. I kept calling your room all day. No one was there. Mr. Bingo got suspicious. Can't a guy take a day off? I just didn't feel like going to work, and I wasn't sick enough to stay in my room. Now, why does everybody have to make such a big thing of it? Hmm. Blood. I washed it off. I don't know how long I was blacked out. I hazily remembered coming to for a moment and falling asleep again. It was some time past midnight when something awakened me. Clarify. Blacked out. You certainly did. Truth? No, not what you think. Not that dream business. The real truth. That you've been wearing yourself out. Why you passed out like any neurotic? Take the key to the button. You must have often had less than that to start out on. Find out where they came from and find out what they were doing on me. Find out where that mirrored room is. Forget them once and for all. Forget them. I can't. They're my only clue to what happened. Nothing happened. Just selling yourself a phony bill of goods. Just as phony as that idea that the nail polish was blood. That's the kind of trick your mind's been playing on you. Oh, it can't be that. And don't crack the lil about this nonsense or I'll... Well, just don't crack. She's fretted about you for years, ever since your mother died. And right now would be the worst time of all. Now? What do you mean? Well, I wasn't going to tell you until later. Bell's going to have a kid. Well, that's fine. That's great, Cliff. Okay. So now you know, so forget it. And if you will hop on that spooky business that so will help me, I'll, I'll drag you off to a doctor. Now go on, kid. Try and get some sleep. I felt I'd never sleep again till I knew the answer. I had to find that house where the nightmare took place. I had to know. four squares. However, Mr. Grayson, if you'll come and look at it, I'm certain. No, thanks. I'm sorry. That's not what I'm looking for. Six days went by without a lead. I scoured the papers. Not one line about the murder. And all week I'd been avoiding Betty. I just couldn't face her with this thing gnawing at my brain. See what I've got downstairs. Come on. Put it on. Let's go. 
Joan, I don't want to go anywhere. I want you to see my new second-hand car that I just got in exchange for my old second-hand car. Please, Cliff, I don't want to go anywhere. What are you trying to be, a groundhog? Lil and I are taking a ride in the country, a little picnic. Listen, I'm all right. I, I don't need any fresh air jaunts to shake the devils out of me, if that's what you're doing. Now, look, do you want Lil to worry any more than she is, after what I told you about her? Come on. Now, look, Cliff, if you think this is going to do any good... Don't be a drip. Come on. Hello, Betty. Hello, Jim. Hi, you, Lil. I'm fine. Vince, I want you to know this wasn't my idea. What do you mean? I'm glad you picked me up. Well, where should we go, kid? Well, anywhere. I don't care. How about Solander Canyon? All right. Solander Canyon. It just popped into my head. Why? Betty and I always preferred the beach. But something made me say Solander. Somehow it seemed important. Going? Nope. But I got a hunch further down this road, we'll find just the right spot. Did you ever see anything so stubborn? I'm sure that the ants here are just as friendly as the ants farther down. Now, what's wrong with that place over there? Nothing, but, uh... Well, stop, then! It's getting late, and besides, I'm hungry. Okay, okay, my love. That's just what I was going to do. This is the life. Toss me another one of those marshmallows, will you, beloved? At thy wish, master. Plop. <laughs> Mommy, you're wonderful. Uh-huh. Just as long as the marshmallows last. Finn, are you coming back to work tomorrow? I don't think so. Mr. Billio asked me to go out with him yesterday. Well, why didn't you go? Why tell me? Ben, what is it? What's the matter? Just forget about me, will you? What is it? Did I do something? No, it's not your fault. It's just that... Look, we're through. There's nothing we can do about it. Don't call me up. Don't pay any attention to me. Get somebody else. Get anybody. It'll be better for you. Bill, Bill, you're a big girl now. I can't help it. You know what lightning does to me. We better go. Hey, kids, it's gonna rain. Oh! Holy smoke, you didn't have to take me seriously. Yes, Betty, come on, let's go! around here. That bridge. I've seen it before. But when? 
There's a cutoff a little ways ahead, just around the turn. There's a big house up there, I, I think. You know this section? You've been here before? There's a cutoff. Keep going, you'll come to it. Two big posts, and then turn the car between them. I didn't know myself how I knew that. But the closer we came, the harder my heart pounded. And the more frightened I got. There they are. Turn swift between those posts, like you told you. There'd be a key someplace. It's a rib. Your brother Vince, the great joker. Hello, anybody home? Don't do that. He's cold. He's shaking. So are you. Let's find a place to dry out before you catch cold. away a long time. Your being a detective comes in handy. In case anybody shows up, we won't get into trouble for crashing in like this. Yeah, yeah. Let's see what gives with the fireplace. That's a break. The gas log. Tuck yourself down. Dry out. Before you catch a chill. Oh, I am tired. Come on, Betty. Share the warmth. I'll scout the kitchen. Some hot tea wouldn't hurt you a bit. It's better already. Ben. Why don't you come over here by the fire?
this is the place, all right. Yeah. Wipe your brow. Have you got it? What are you two doing up there? Keep her downstairs. Keep her downstairs. Down a minute, Lou. Watch the tea in the kitchen. I got some water boiling. All right, but I wish you'd stop poking around. what he was crouched in front of that night. He must have been using a blowtorch. That's what made that bluish light. It made her face stand out in the reflections like a mask. That, that must be the one I propped him up in after I... No, don't! Yet! Give me a chance. Cut it out. Dried blood. Someone who was hurt was in here. Somebody who was dead. I'll take these back to the kitchen. I'll take them. The rain ought to let up soon. Meanwhile, catch yourselves a nap. Mm -hmm. Now let's hear about another dream. You think I lied, Dutch? You know how to get here from a dream, didn't you? You know where the key was from a dream, didn't you? Oh, well, that fumbling around didn't fool me. You even knew where the light switch was from a dream? If you weren't Lil's brother, I'd push your lion face out to the back of your head. But I tell you, Cliff, I tried. You came to me for help. You didn't have guts enough to come clean. You say, Cliff, I went out to such and such a place in the canyon last night and killed a guy. Such and such a guy for such and such a reason. But I tell you... No, you had to cook up a dream. I can respect a guy no matter how rotten a crime he's committed who will own up to it. I can understand a guy who'll deny it flatly. But a guy that'll come to someone trading on the fact he's married to his sister abuses common sense and make a fool out of him like you did to me. But I didn't... I got no use for him. He's lower than the lowest rat we ever brought in for knifing somebody in an alley. Look, I found this key in my pocket when I woke up. I found this button playing on my sympathies. Getting me to think in terms of doctors and medical observation, was that it? Was it? No, I... I Cliff, I swear to you, I... Some dream, that was. Well, the dream's over with. The baby's awake now. I'm gonna get the facts out of you, and whether they go any further than me or not, that's my business. But at least I'm gonna have them. How can I tell you what I don't know? What were you doing here that night? What brought you here? I was never here before. I never saw the place till the day when I came here with you and Lil. Who was the guy you killed? What was his name? I mean, agony already without... Are you gonna answer me? Are you? I can't. You're asking me things I can't answer. That's the almighty. Whoever watches over us at night when we're unconscious. Who was the guy? Why did you kill him? Why? I've handled close-mouthed guys before. You're gonna tell me or I'm gonna have to kill you with my own hand. Get over there. What is this? I'll ask the questions. What are you two doing in here? You came in out of the rain. That suit you? Not yet. 
identify yourselves and be quick about it. Help yourself. Thanks, Earl Heady. Headquarters Homicide Division, huh? How about doing a little identifying yourself? Well, I'm a deputy attached to the county sheriff's office out this way. The Torrance is the name. My brother-in-law, Vince Grayson. How do you do? I'm detailed to keep an eye on this place. I was home having a little bite to eat, then I'm away back to the station. Say, how'd you get in here? I thought I had it locked up. The key was under a flower box on the porch. It was? Must have been a spare. I have the original. We didn't know there was a second one. What do you mean you're detailed to keep an eye on this place? But didn't you know? There was a murder committed here last week. It was? I'd like to hear more about that. Sounds interesting. Oh, no thanks. I cut him on about a month ago. Always uh, carry a pack of these now. Nothing. This place belonged to a wealthy couple named Belknap. Husband frequently goes on long business trips. He was away when it happened, Mexico. In fact, we haven't been able to notify him yet. His wife was a pretty little thing. Was kind of flirty. It was a young duck she used to run around with. His name was Bob Clune. Why? Milkman found Mrs. Belknap about daybreak Monday, near a road that leads over here. Dead? Dying, unconscious, both legs broken, skull fractured, insides all busted up. <coughs> kind of gets them, doesn't it? Things like this are new to him, I guess. What had happened? Car did it to her. We found the car. Blood and hair in the tires. Bob Clune's car. Well, then Warner, that's my chief, he come over here to have a look around. He finds a safe busted in the mirrored room upstairs. Take up a show if you want. Mirrored room, hmm? Huh? Well, that gave us a case. Clune knew that Belknap had a lot of dough in the safe when he left for Mexico. He came here, started to heist it, and Mrs. Belknap caught him. She ran out afraid he'd kill her. He got his car, chased her down the road, and ran over. Pretty brutal. All of a sudden, life was slow again. I don't know how to drive, I kept thinking. Cliff knew that, too. Have a smoke, kid. Anyway, that's the case we thought we had till Wednesday morning. Thought you had. We sent out a alarm for Clune. Then Wednesday, Mrs. Belknap came, too. The first thing she asked was, is Bob all right? He didn't kill Bob Clune, did he? He? Yeah. What she told us sent us hot footing right back here. We find Clune's body propped up behind one of those mirrored doors upstairs. Been stabbed with an awl. She died that night, well... In our case. Did you get anything on the real killer? Practically everything, except the guy himself. All the dope's over at my chief's office. I was just on my way over there. Are you interested? Oh, it's right up my alley. Might be able to even help you find the killer. Glad to have you come along. I'll have to tell the girls we'll be gone for a while. Shouldn't let it get you, kid. This is just routine with us. I know, it's just that I'm not used to this kind of discussion, I guess. Yeah, I can understand that. I was a little bit squeamish myself when I first started on the job. They're both asleep. I left a note. Come on, Vince. Uh, I'll stay here. Come on, Vince. Funny, I didn't see anything in the L.A. papers about it, Captain Warner. They've been playing ball with us. We had an idea if the killer didn't read about us finding the bodies, he, he might come back to take a look. Maybe to find out what happened to Mrs. Bell now. Here's a description she gave us before she died. The killer was about 24, medium build, light brown, wavy hair, worn rather long. His eyes were fixed and glassy, as though he was mentally unbalanced. You got any pictures on them? Mrs. Uh, Belknap, Clune, I mean. We had some photographs taken in the morgue. Let's have a look. Got any ideas? Nothing in particular. Just thought it might tie in with something at our office. Take a look, Vince. Who oh, no, knows? You might even know these people. It was them all right. Faces in the dream. That woman and the man are killed. Now I knew there was no escape. I was a murderer. I. I.
Out like the light. What do you suppose did it? Those death pictures? Things like this sure get him. I noticed that before. He's not well. He gets these dizzy spells now and then. It's only since I shut started... up. Yeah, that's better. He'll be all right. As soon as I get him home. Thanks, Warner. I'll be seeing you. Okay. Thanks, Lil. I'm sorry the rain spoiled the picnic. Will you take care of yourself? I'll call you. I'm going up with Vince for a while. I bet you happen to be in the loading zone. Well, Smiley's on this beat. If he says anything, just tell him whose car it is. Lil's waiting downstairs. I'm going to take her home first before I do anything. I think you love Betty, but that's your business. All I know is I love Lil. Bad enough what this is going to do to her when she finds out. I'm going to see that she gets at least one good night's sleep before she does. What am I going to do, Cliff? I don't have to ask you if you killed him. You passed out cold when you saw the photographs and did. In the morning, I'm gonna take you down, turn in what I know at my own precinct house, and make him pass it on to Warner. <laughs> Look, he's trying to make up his mind.
I didn't think of that way out. Vince! Oh, Vince! I didn't want to drag you into this. What is it? If you're in trouble so horrible that you wanted to... Darling, don't. He won't try it again, Betty. Just keep that thought. But why, Cliff? Why? Never mind now. You go on down. Take Lil home. But don't tell her anything about that. Just say that I thought it was better if I stayed here with Vince tonight. He's not feeling well. Okay? Cliff, whatever it is that's come between us, promise me you'll help him. You go on now. And take care of Lil. Yep. No, I can't sleep. Have a smoke. What about the arrest, Cliff? Cancel for now. When a guy's willing to die like you were, there must be something to his story. I tried to tell you. I don't think you really knew what you were doing that night. I think you're telling the truth to the best of your ability. I'm licked. I'd rather not even talk about it. You might as well have let me jump. I'm dead inside already. Still, I can't figure why you picked that way. Most of them try the bridge or poison or even gas. Thought of that. This place hasn't any gas. Yeah, good thing, too. More houses didn't have gas, there'd be less. Yeah? It'd be darned inconvenient if an electric light bulb burns out unexpectedly. Happened to a fellow in the next room the other night. Yeah? Yeah, I had to use a candle. Same night I had the dream. Use a candle? How did you know? Were you in there with him? Hmm? No, he rapped, stuck his head in the door. Wanted to know if my light had gone out, too. What'd you have to come in here for? Couldn't you tell by the hall? I don't know. There's a little night light around the bend in the hall. Maybe that's on a different circuit. Still no reason for him to barge in on you. I'd like to hear the rest of this. There isn't any rest of it. I've told you all there is. Never mind. Now, who was he? Did you know him? Now, tell it to me step by step, like to a six-year-old kid. Okay. Well, the guy's name was Bert. He'd been living in the room about, uh, oh, a week or ten days before that. Used to see him in the elevator. Chatted with him a couple of times in the lobby. All right. Now, tell me what happened the night his light went out. Well, I'd been in bed for some time, reading the paper like I do every night. Just put the lamp out and got to sleep when I heard this knock on the door. Who is it? Harry Bird from next door. Did I wake you? No, I just turned out the light. Oh, you did. The light in my room just went out. That's why I wanted to see you. I thought maybe the circuit was off. Your light working? I'll try it. Yes. It must have been the globe that burned out. Sorry I troubled you. Not at all. You're tired, aren't you? I can see you're pretty tired. I'm sorry. Oh, really, it's all right. You're tired, and I woke you up. It's all right.
I guess he kind of had a one-track mind. Used to mumbling to himself, maybe. Anyway, he finally closed the door and went away, and I dropped off to sleep. Now, wait a minute. Are you sure the door closed after him? Did you see it close? Did you hear it close? Did it uh, go like this? Did it make a click? Or did it go like this? Without a click? I can see you're having trouble giving me a definite answer. You don't remember it either way. Well, what difference does it make? The door must have closed. He went away and I went to sleep. He was standing there with a candle in his hand. And he kept saying, you're tired. For what? Eyes fixed and glassy as though he were mentally unbalanced. What? I was just remembering something in the deathbed statement Mrs. Belknap gave to Warner. You, uh, you say you chatted with this fellow once in a while. What about? Oh, sports, politics. <laughs> Going down the elevator one time, he had a box of methylated cough drops in his pocket. Go ahead, have one. No, thanks. I don't like them. Oh, go on. They're good for you. No, thanks, really. You should have one. Your voice sounds kind of hoarse. I took one because I kind of felt sorry for him. Really hate those cough drops. Testing willpower. You seem to make something out of this silly thing. What is it? Just guessing, that's all. You get some sleep, kid. Where are you going? Hey, I, I, I thought you were going to stay here tonight. You're going to have to take one of your hats. I'm going out to the Belknap home and the Warner's headquarters while I'm out there. Now? All the way out there, this hour of the morning? I don't know what I've got yet, if anything. And Vince, don't try any more shortcuts. That clock is always a little slow. It's like the horse I had yesterday. Hello, kid. Come on up to your room. Lil called a while ago. She's been worried. Married to a cop for 15 years and still worried. You didn't tell her anything? No. Good. Have you been up there all this time till now? I'll be back to town once in between, get something I needed, get a leave of absence. What for? I'll tell you later. And I had the room next door. Where'd you get this? I didn't have to ask you who it was. I already know it from the desk clerk. A couple of others I showed it to when they stopped back here early this morning. He's also Dorothy Belknap's husband, Louis Belknap. What about me? Does this mean... Was, was he the one who... There's no out in this for you, Vince. Not yet. I checked your fingerprints with the ones worn I got from the mirrored door. You found your way into Belknap's home. You punctured Bob Clune's heart with a bore and shoved his body into a closet. And Mrs. Belknap? You didn't kill her. You can't drive. What do you think Belknap drove you up there? Was waiting for you outside. Mrs. Belknap ran out and her husband, using Clune's car, deliberately ran over her. 
Why didn't I know what I was doing? We think we know why, Vince. I heard sick, but I got back into that house before Bell and I returned from the funeral. A couple of friends drove back with him. I waited upstairs, looking down into the living room as they said goodbye. Why don't you come and stay at our place tonight? Yes, we'd love to have you. Don't worry yourselves about me. Well, goodbye. Good night. Good night. He was coming up. My blood turned to water. I wanted to scream out, to run away from there. But I had to stay. It was my only chance to save myself. How'd you get here? You showed me the way, didn't you? You remembered coming here? You didn't think I would, did you? You couldn't have. Then how did I get here? You explain it. How long have you been in here, like this? Since shortly before dark. I got in while you were at the funeral. Who'd you bring with you? Just this. You remember the drive up? You couldn't have. You had the look. The typical look of the hypnotized subject. I faked it. I was holding a thumbtack pressed into each palm the whole way so I wouldn't go under no matter how good you were at it. Then why did you do everything I directed? When I put the knife in your hand and told you what to do, you took it and... I thought maybe you'd pay off to keep me quiet. And then if I balked, I figured I'd get a knife in my back. But what happened? What went wrong inside? I let you out of the car, told you what to do? I dropped the knife somewhere in the dark. But I came up anyway. Cloon was stealing your dough and about to run out with your wife, wasn't that it? Yes. Yes. But how... I would have been killed by Cloon, only your wife handed me a bore by mistake. And I had to use it to save myself. Oh, that explains how she got out of the house. I had to finish her with his car. I might have known you were under imperfect control. Oh, your control is perfect enough, Bell, now. Don't let that worry you. You still have the knack. But you just said... Yeah, and you fell for it. I didn't know what I was doing when I came up here to do your dirty job. I'd have never found you, but I saw your picture in the paper as the husband of the murdered woman and recognized you as Bird. I didn't come here to be paid off for what I did. Even though your will is stronger than mine, you know you couldn't make me commit murder. I killed that man in self-defense. But I'll never be able to clear myself in the eyes of the law. Ever. I'm going to make you pay for doing that to me. Now, this way. Wait, don't do that. Alive, maybe I can do something for you. I'll give you money, I'll get you out of the country. No one will know. My conscience will know. I've got an honest man's conscience in the murderer's body. You should have let me alone, Belknap. That was your mistake. Wait, one minute. Give me one minute to make you see. Just 60 seconds. You don't want to kill me. Those two were plotting against me for months. I knew it. That's why I planned the whole thing. I had to do it. Don't you understand? You can understand that. Stop it, Bell, now. Just a few seconds, please. You don't want to kill me. Look up. Look up, please. See? Just 30 seconds. And I'm sure I can make you understand. Just a few seconds. Shall we take him now? You gotta let him finish. We've got to have proof for a jury that he can actually put him under. Just 15 seconds, that's all. That isn't much, is it? 15 seconds. Killing me won't calm your conscience. You don't really want to kill me, Grayson. Drop your gun. It's too heavy. Drop the gun, Grayson. Drop it. 
You're too tired to hold it up. Just drop it. You'll feel so much better. Just let go of it. Better still. Give the gun to me, Grayson. You're tired. Tired. That horrible curtain closed over me again. I couldn't fight it. I knew he was taking me somewhere. I didn't want to go. But my brain was handcuffed. And I was walking through another nightmare. what I say. I am wanted for the murder of those two people at the Belknap house. I have no chance. I see no other way out. Sign it. Vincent Grayson.
this way you'll find peace. You all right now, kid? Yeah. Yeah. All of a sudden, I'm, I'm all right. I'll see you inside. Too bad you have to go through the arraignment, Grayson, but. Good luck. Thanks a lot for everything. What? This, it must have been horrible. It was. If I didn't read the newspapers, I'd never know what my wonderful husband's doing. If you knew, you'd never have let me do it. <laughs> Vince, we better go face the judge. Don't worry, you've got a perfect plea of self-defense. Come on, mother. <laughs> Scared, darling? I'll be glad when it's over. I'll be right there with you all the time. <laughs> 